I was born in Lynn, Massachusetts, um, in 1930. I did spend some of my childhood in Lynn. We were in Mull River every summer. Um, actually, I was in Mull River the summer before I was born. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother was pregnant. Then we lived some of the rest of the time in um, another suburb of Boston, uh, where I went to high school. And then I went on to um, Harvard University, Harvard College, and then to graduate school at Harvard. I came to stay year-round uh, in 19, 1970 and began the began teaching in Marble School in 1971. It was a very wonderful opportunity when I was a freshman in college that I was able to get a, a job as a summer uh, assistant to A.W.R. McKenzie, the founder of the Gaelic College. Uh, my job as his assistant was to drive his car, mm -hmm. to do his typing, to prepare his press releases. If the cook didn't show up, I cooked for the kids that were in the summer school. If the Gaelic teacher didn't come, I met the kids and we sang Gaelic songs. Um, I took them swimming in the afternoon. Um, I took them when they went to the Bell Muse when they went to the home of uh, the Groveners on the Bell Estate as entertainers for the Groveners' distinguished visitors. Um, whatever had to be done that he didn't want to do, I got to do, and um, it was a great experience because I met all kinds of people mm -hmm. who were involved with culture or would be involved with culture, mm -hmm. uh, would be involved with heritage. For me, then, it gave me an insight into how government works with cultural institutions mm -hmm. and how important it was to uh, recognize the significance of government because the Gaelic College benefited or or was derelict at times because of the change in government. The Highland Village, celebrating 50 years, um, slowly moved from a, an outdoor concert which raised money to keep open a small log uh, building which housed some artifacts. It had a start as the institution which was to fulfill the dream of Angus L. MacDonald for a, a village or a replica village to identify Hebridean Gallic culture, or West Coast Hebridean culture. The Board of Trade here saw a, a cultural entity such as the Highland Village to be a stimulus to local economy as farms declined, as fishing ended here. Um, and they applied to this Society of Scottish, this Federation of Scottish Societies in Nova Scotia, to be the location okay. for a Highland Village, call it what you will, Quokkan Gallic, um, and and the Ganesh wanted it, and Picto County wanted it, and Picto County thought it had because of the Hector. And because of its political clout, which it's always had in Halifax, much more than Iona had, <laughs> um, it had it, it thought it had a shoe in to get to get the site. But curiously enough, the first presentation was made, was written and made in Gaelic, and that startled the people who were on this decision-making committee from the Society of, from the Federation of Scottish Societies. And it made them stop and think, and then 
A.D. McKinnon, who was the Presbyterian minister in Little Narrows in White Cogla, and was a fluent, marvelous Gallic preacher, he made another presentation in Gallic, and all of a sudden, the, the mood changed. With that kind of background, um, in, the, in the language, this institution, the site came to be the site for the developing institution, but there was, but there was no money. Uh, and there was no money for some years. One of the things that I think the village has been that we don't always say is that it has been a place where individuals have developed skills. Mm -hmm. We don't always think of cultural institutions as being educational institutions, but it works. The cultural federations came into being in order to promote the, the concept of um, public education in the arts um, throughout the province, under the encouragement of the provincial government, but not under the direction of the Department of Education. Right. So these activities, such as museums and heritage, um, choral groups, multiculturalism, mm -hmm. writers, uh, drama, um, and visual arts were, were, were sort of thought of as ways in which communities would gain an understanding of their own strengths and backgrounds and would be adult education courses less academic mm -hmm. than any extension programs offered by universities. It was a very brilliant concept um, and it, it was at one time under the recreation That's right. department mm -hmm. and the federation <coughs> of heritage um, was encouraged by um, the person who was in charge of formulating the concept mm -hmm. of these federations. Louis Stevens, was an able, capable man, um, and he chose Elizabeth Ross to be the mm -hmm. first executive director of the Federation of Nova Scotian Heritage. She had some very definite ideas about grassroots growth mm -hmm. of heritage and, and museums, and she believed in the significance of good training. She, she was the right person at the right time for the development of the number of museums which came into being as a result of the stimulus of the um, uh, centennial. The stimulus which the Federation gave for training and self-respect encouraged people, I think, to view themselves as people living all around this island as having the right and the responsibility to meet and to talk about their particular concerns. The name I own the connection came about as a result of connection. Um, but because of the island of Iona being the place in Scotland to which St. Columba came from Ireland and brought Christianity to Scotland, and the people who came to the this little island of Iona and formed in the 500s uh, this colony of Christians, then moved out from Iona to the rest of Scotland establishing churches and monasteries, but they would always come back to Iona and report what they had done. Mm -hmm. So there was that outward motion and the coming back to talk to one another about where things were. At any rate, that was, that was kind of the thinking in calling this the Iona Connection, mm -hmm. was go out and come back, go out and come back and talk about what's going on. The, 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 the Iona Connection 
has fulfilled a major function in bringing people together, which was its task. Um, it has had some projects which have been beneficial on an island-wide basis. Uh, it has been the model by which other organizations, both in the province of Nova Scotia and some other places, have looked at regional museological or cultural groups and how they can form mm -hmm. without much money. I mean, the Iona Connection never had any money. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't have government funding. It was it cost very little to to belong. Mm -hmm. um, the museum fed the, the museum where the meetings were held initially just fed the people mm -hmm. when they came um, at their own expense. The Gary College did that several times. Mm -hmm. The Iona Connection came to have an icon significance for people who didn't really know what it was, mm -hmm. but it, but knew there was something happening out there which pulled the museum, the heritage types together. See, from my vantage point, there are very few institutions on this island which, which cross Kelly's Mountain. Mm -hmm. CBU never has, sadly enough. Um, CBC doesn't even reach the whole island mm -hmm. from Sydney. Once you get beyond Marble into Port Hood and Jurdic and Port Hawkesbury, mm -hmm. they hear CBC Halifax. Mm -hmm. So the Iona Connection has, has done something in the way in which it's brought people from Cape North to Port Hastings, to St. Peter's, from Glace Bay, from Dominion, from North Sydney, from, from Lake Ainsley, from Shetty Camp, Marguerite, Port Hood, Marble, uh, together at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. And nothing else has done, has done exactly that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's commendable and, and, and it's been really worthwhile. Mm -hmm. um, the, there are lots of things to be done. Um, and, um, I think it will continue. I think the Iona Connection will probably have more significance in the long run on this island than the Association of Nova Scotia Museums has, will have. I think, I, think, I think a person has to spend, I think you have to, in heritage on Cape Breton Island, mm -hmm. you have to spend some time, like A.W.R. Mackenzie sitting on hillsides, looking out to see what there is. I have every admiration for the, the depth of caring of people on this island for local history, local storytelling. It takes that kind of, 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 in, of drive mm -hmm. in, in order for the, the heritage to be identified and the way in which it is promoted and carried on um, to take root. Mm 